next speaker is Bruno Maciero, who will present improving in situ sound absorption measurements using sparse multi-channel blind convolution. So uh, after the brief, after the brief, it's the uh, one <laughs> okay, so as uh, Efren already introduced me, my name is Bruno Maziero and I am at the University of Campinas in the faculty of grant and the idea is to, um, come to prove their claim that green walls do improve uh, thermal comfort uh, air quality, but also acoustic comfort. So they contact the university to uh, the civil engineering department to check on, on these uh, aspects. So Stella is working with uh, Alvaro on, uh, on measuring the absorption coefficient of green walls. And they came to me to ask for help on how are we going to uh, measure actually those coefficients. Since this is a, a heterogeneous medium, how are we going to actually do that kind of measurement? And what we came up was, uh, okay, we have to do it in situ. So we were looking at possible ways of measuring in situ acoustic uh, absorption coefficient. And we did already, so we started uh, that work and uh, we have already some uh, uh, results that we presented uh, in uh, July in uh, Internoise. So I'm just going to present again the, the conclusions of that work, uh, where we, instead of using the green wall, we use just a PET wool, which is a homogeneous, a more homogeneous material, so we can actually test the, the methods <coughs> and then move on to work with the, a more heterogeneous media. And uh, to, in this uh, first uh, experiment, or this first uh, trial, we were actually aiming at comparing different measuring um, methods. So we compared a, a single microphone method, uh, a microphone array method, and uh, the impedance tube. Of course, the impedance tube was just uh, our ground tr truth, because we wouldn't be able to use that with a green wall. But we wanted to check if uh, if the microphone met in situ microphone methods would work, and so these are uh, the results we got at that at that uh, that time. Um, and we, we observed quite a large uh, scattering in the data, but the tendency was uh, was uh, it showed that we were actually measuring something similar to what we would measure in the impedance tube, which is here in blue. And, but we did have lots of variability, especially in the low frequencies. And those results are, um, so if you see uh, in uh, green on the top, uh, those, that's the impedance tube again, and uh, one with one microphone method or with uh, array method. So we did, using four, there was an array method with four microphones and that already did improve a bit the, the results, the variability of the results. But still, uh, when we were, uh, this is just the setup that we used for the array, uh, for both one microphone and two and four microphone uh, measurement. So we would place our array close to the to this wall. It was a three by three meter uh, wall filled with PET wool. And we tested different uh, distance for the for the loudspeaker to the arrays, and uh, so the idea here is that we we using the, the arrays to to separate just to do a del delay and some beamforming and separate incoming and uh, reflected uh, component of the sound <coughs> from that extract the absorption coefficient. Uh, we 
with the one microphone array instead of uh, doing a spatial filter, what we were doing was just applying time filter and getting the, the beginning of the impulse response would be our incoming signal and the first reflection would be the household time filter. Uh, but what we observed is that uh, once we do the measurement, it uh, was quite noisy, of course, so we couldn't really um, separate that well the incoming uh, noise, the incoming signal, and the reflected signal. And we, we did need to do some sort of uh, pre equalization and to eliminate the influence that is on the loudspeaker and the microphone in a delay and some filter in the direction of the loudspeaker and get it and use that as the, as the pre equalization. Uh, that, that gave us this uh, result. But we still noticed that there is still uh, quite a lot of noise around the speed, the, the, the peaks, which we believe were leading to the to these uh, variations in the, especially in the mid low frequencies. So the idea was let's try to get a, another way of equalizing these uh, impulse responses and uh, another as so so we were looking at possibly blind methods to equalize these impulse responses and, uh, and so now I get come to the point where we actually uh, propose or show a new uh, blind equalization methods and so for that we we used the fact that we were using an array, so we had multi-channel, multi and first we just did, uh, well, as I said, the average, which is just the and sun, but we also tried substituting average by the median, um, and also we, we went and talked with uh, a colleague that uh, works in, in the seismic area, and does plant source deconvolutions in the for seismic measurements and we tried, tried uh, three of the filters they usually use in a uh, seismic to see if we could uh, improve our measurements here. So I'm not gonna uh, go into much detail of the way we derive those filters. Uh, but uh, for instance, this is uh, our baseline, so no, no equalization. It's uh, here in this part, and this is the result. Just uh, kind of hard to point from this point, from behind the microphone. Just this here. that's bad. Uh, so, and this is the result we got by just. Uh, Turning the, the loudspeaker 180 degrees and doing a free field measurement and uh, equalizing with that. So you, you notice there is still lots of noise going on. And then uh, the second option was to just uh, use uh, the direction of uh, to time align the, the signals and take the average and use that average as a as a localization. And what we notice here is that there's the presence of uh, these uh, several little peaks, which come from the, the, the fact that if you just do delay and sum, if, you just, uh, uh, if you're just aligning your, sig your, your signals and taking the average, the peaks from the, from the reflection, they will still be present in my in my seat, in my average. So the equalization filter that I will have will still contain the, the impulse responses from from the reflection which I don't want I actually don't want to have. And I can't just window it out because the the response of the loudspeaker is much longer than the uh, the, the arrival time of my reflection. So, uh, yeah, so as I said, you can notice this effect here on the, on the little peaks. 
So the, the other option we tried out was, okay, let's just then, uh, instead of doing the average, let's take the median of these values. And by taking the median, uh, I can uh, see the, 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 those uh, reflections actually as outliers, and they, they won't affect that much the, the, the result. I will get a, a, a more smooth uh, equalization filter, so to say. And this is the result. So now I, I actually do get rid of those. Uh, so if you notice in this region, for instance, I'm getting rid of those little peaks. And I'm actually increasing a bit the energy of, uh, my, of my reflection. So the, op the objective here is actually just to be able to window out my direct sound and my reflected sound in this region here. And of course, everything that's coming later here is just uh, noise. I don't really need that. But still, uh, we were, as I said, we were also looking for other options. And so the first uh, thing we tried out was uh, what uh, what they call prediction error fil filter, which is a pretty simple matched filter. So uh, the idea here, here is that uh, we assume that uh, all the all channels they are influenced by the same system, which in our case is our loudspeaker plus the plus the air transmission, and uh, we are looking for a common um, for this common system that that's present in all the in in all channels, and uh, we use that. Uh, to generate, so we're actually looking for a filter that will filter out the common component in all in all signals, and this is done by just uh, creating a convolution matrix and, in, and doing a, a pseudo inverse of the convolution matrix. But uh, you see here that the results are that great. Actually, they were even worse than just doing the the average or the median. And this has to do with the fact that this uh, system, uh, this um, prediction error filters, they actually only work well for minimum phase systems, which is usually not the case for loudspeakers. So this was actually not supposed to work and it didn't work that well. But, uh, but it, it does work well in seismic for their systems are usually uh, minimum phase, or they can make them minimum phase. But uh, so, as it was not the case for us, we we tried another one. There is, uh, an, which is the LP norm sparse blind convolution, which is actually based on, on the prediction error filter, but it applies now sparsity constraints. The idea here is that the, I'm now looking for a filter that will uh, once uh, filtered, uh, convolved with the, this common component of all the of all my, my channels, will give me a single pulse. So, I, I mean, it's a really sparse uh, signal. And uh, well, this one did work much better now. It does uh, invert the phase uh, if you compare it to the other ones, and does have a, a bit of delay, but that's not a problem. We can. Uh, recover the direct sound and the reflected sound without uh, the critical impulses, but still uh, it's not still not perfect. So we went and tried a, yet another one which is called the sparse multi-channel blind deconvolution. And this one is a completely different uh, uh, approach to it. We are not looking for a filter but we are actually looking for, let's try to find the signal uh, that once convolved with a common component will give me uh, a similar uh, signal or I will recover my original signal if I convolve it with a common system. And again, uh, this did uh, give me really sparse signals, uh, almost nothing in between the direct and reflected sound. Uh, 
But once I go and compare all the, uh, do calculate the absorption coefficient with all six methods that I just presented, I don't actually notice any improvement on my absorption coefficient. <laughs> so after learning about new filters and uh, playing around with signal processing, I still have the problem of uh, measuring my absorption coefficient uh, on uh, low frequencies in situ. So yeah, with that I wrap it up my, my talk and I want to thank uh, Professor Kenji and Filho, which was the one supporting us for the seismic with the seismic of uh, like the convolution algorithms. Good. Thank uh, you. Thank you. I think that uh, uh, in the audience um, there are some comments, questions. Um, yes. uh, if not, I would invite uh, Dr. Bella <laughs> sitting on the back. Dr. Bella, would you want to make some comments about subtraction? <laughs> it's difficult to say. Maybe you remember, Bruno, that we used in the quiet project the subtraction method. And mm -hmm. that worked quite well. Yes. <laughs> so, simple method. Yeah, but but simple. you need to time align the signals and the amplitude align in the uh, calibration procedure. So, yeah, yes. Well, but actually, the as this, this is pretty much what you're saying. We just uh, yeah. that's actually one of the methods that we did try was that one. So, so the uh, uh, so I, I I joined that, and uh, when you do all those deconvolution signal processing, and then the look at actually that the scale of direct sound against the reflector, that is not a good way. You cannot just use that to judge the quality of your deconvolution. Actually, the, the devil in the details <laughs> is in the tiny, tiny reflector signal. So any of the convolution, no matter how sharply that you can actually deconvolve, that impact of that your tiny, tiny reflection. Okay, so, and uh, you can try much better uh, use a highly reflecting material than give you better results, but if you are talking about the absorption material, absorbing material, the signal is quite small. Yeah, but then uh, the problem is that once we go to the green walls, we we do need to to see that uh, just a small reflection there. Yeah. I have a question uh, aligned with the discussion. It's, I understand the sparsity you're promoting as a time sparsity. So yes. we said that implicitly introducing a bias towards a flat uh, response or a so the put any, any sort of bringing in the time response within a be then uh, it is shrunk and therefore biased the Well, but uh, what we observed is that uh, no matter if I apply sparsity here or not, uh, that doesn't influence the the, coef the absorption coefficient in there. No. <laughs> so no. all, all of these different uh, method, uh, results in the end, when I get and get this the direct sound and the reflected sound and compare them, I still get pretty much the same trend. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.